Would you stake your life on the line to say that the Loch Ness Monster is real? I don't think anybody really would. Some people say that the biblical story is a similar thing, so why would anybody die for that? Let's use an excellent historian from history. Luke. Herod the Great died in 4 BC. So Jesus was born sometime between 6 and 4 BC and taken back to Jerusalem once it was rid of Herod, because Herod wanted Jesus dead, so Jesus was somewhere between 0 and 2 years of age when he went back to Jerusalem with his parents. We know John the Baptist was born shortly before Jesus and started his ministry later in the 15th year of Tiberius' reign. Tiberius began to reign in AD 14, so John's ministry began in AD 29, 15 years after. Jesus was baptized at the start of his ministry, so he was baptized in 28 or 29, and he ministered to the ancient world for about three and a half years before he died in AD 33. Now, Pontius Pilate ruled Judea from AD 26 to 36, and Jesus was killed during a Passover. So if we put all of these dates together, we can get an exact date of his death, Friday, April 3rd, AD 33. Jesus Christ was crucified on Friday, April 3rd, AD 33. Okay, great, so what? The scriptures were written hundreds of years later. They didn't know what they were talking about. That's just wrong, and I'm gonna show you why. Imagine this, you're a first century medical doctor, and you have embarked on a research project to record the events of the early church. As you describe many of these events, your narrative is so filled with details that every informed reader will know that either you must have access to eyewitness testimony or you were an eyewitness yourself. For example, as you follow Paul on his travels, you shift from using the pronoun they to we, and you correctly record the names of local politicians, local slang, local weather patterns, local topography, business practices, you even record the right depth of the water about a quarter mile off Malta as your ship is about to run aground in a storm. Since you obviously find it important to record all of these minor details, if your main subject, the Apostle Paul, was executed at the hands of the Roman Emperor Nero, do you think you would record it? Or if Jesus' brother James, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, was killed at the hands of the Sanhedrin, the same Jewish body that sentenced Jesus to die, do you think you would record it? Of course! And if you failed to record such momentous events, we would rightly assume that you wrote your narrative before their deaths. We know from Clement of Rome, writing in the early 1st century, and from other church fathers, that Paul was executed during the reign of Nero, which ended sometime in 68 AD. And we know from Josephus that James was killed in AD 62, so we can conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that the book of Acts was written before AD 62. And if Acts was written by the latest AD 62, then we know that the Gospel of Luke is written before that. How do we know? because Luke describes it as his second book. Luke wrote both the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts as letters to his friend Theophilus. He reminds Theophilus of the Gospel of Luke, his former book, when he says in the first verse of Acts, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. So we now know that Luke couldn't have written his Gospel any later than 62 AD. So Luke wrote a good account of all the things that happened around him, and he didn't write it hundreds of years later. It was only 29. Aha! So you admit that you were wrong. It's not hundreds of years, sure, but it's 29. These people might as well have been playing a giant game of telephone. Are you ready to hear something you've never heard before? Homer's Iliad is the second most copied book from ancient history. It was written in 800 BC and, as it stands today, has about 1757 copies. And do you know how many years are between the autograph and the first manuscript? 400! The earliest copy is from 400 BC, 400 years later, and we don't doubt the trustworthiness of this text. Like I said, you probably read it in high school. So if 400 years is enough to trust a text, why not 29? Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what the most copied book, the number one book from the ancient world is, it's the New Testament. A simple objection that people make is that we can't trust scripture. It's been corrupted throughout the years, or the copies aren't all right, or we can't make out what it originally said because it's a translation of a translation of a translation. 
If anybody out there is bilingual, and there are many of you, you trust your own translations, right? And if you had to write a book, you'd trust that, right? You know what you wrote, and you can trust it, and someone else can read it and understand what you were saying, right? Well, the same thing happened here. The writers of these old manuscripts did the same thing. They just translated from one language to another, and we can believe in that. Alright, so you answered most of my questions, so we can trust the translation and the timeline and the contents of the books, but you still haven't answered the big one. Did Luke believe that Jesus was God at all? You said yourself that the writings are trustworthy. All we have to do is look. So, what did Luke say? He wrote about the coming of Jesus, and that people called him God, and that he had power over demons, and that he was crucified and resurrected. Huh. Finally, Jesus told his disciples that they'd be persecuted for his namesake. He didn't make it easy, he didn't say they were going to become kings or anything. He told them that they'd be persecuted, and they were. Yet, they continued to preach. People like Paul and James were killed for their belief. They never jumped ship, they never recanted, they died for what they believed in. That's all the evidence in the world you need for this. But if you don't believe what the Bible says, maybe you can take the long way around. See what the Quran says. It'll lead you right back here. Or, if you're not intellectually minded and you're more emotive, you can see what I put together here. Either way, I'll see you next time.